My remit was to try to um, outline some of the exciting initiatives in the UK at the moment uh, and scientific advances that really might over the coming years uh, have some uh, impact on the way we look after patients with MPN. So, so I started off by outlining some interesting research from the University of Sheffield uh, that had actually originated in research on, on fruit flies, Drosophila. And what they've been doing is trying to work out how the JAK2 gene, which everyone knows about in the MPN uh, field, uh, might be targeted um, using different approaches, and in particular using drugs or compounds that are already available rather than completely new treatments. And what they found in that research is that a, a, a very old-fashioned, if you like, treatment called methotrexate that is used quite widely in tens of thousands of people to treat conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis, they found that that treatment was in fact quite a potent JAK2 inhibitor. So that research is quite recent, but we've already, uh, through the uh, NCRI clinical trial subgroup that I chair, um, translated that basic research uh, through to a clinical trial that we will be opening next year, testing whether this treatment, methotrexate, is beneficial as a putative JAK2 inhibitor to treat patients um, with polycythemia vera and essential thrombocythemia who are resistant to the standard treatment or uh, getting side effects from the standard treatment called hydroxycarbamide. There were two other main things that I talked about. One, one was um, CRISPR. This is otherwise in, in, in common parlance as it were known as uh, genome editing. So this is really a very recent advance that there's a huge amount of interest in uh, at the moment. So this is a new technology, again something that's arisen out of very uh, what I would call basic research in bacteria, understanding how bacteria have an immune system to protect themselves against virus infections. And, and the people studying that, that system actually found out that, that they, they um, could use the same system that, that bacteria use to edit the genome uh, in human cells. So that basically means you can now, uh, for the first time really, correct uh, genetic abnormalities carried in cells. So that might mean in MPN patients, for instance, you might be able to correct the JAK2 mutation or the calreticulin mutation with the idea that you might be able to restore the cells back to normal. Now that is still a research hypothesis rather than anything that's been proven to be possible, but this new technique is very exciting because it, it's enabling um, us to, to do things that simply were not possible before. And linked to that, I talk quite extensively about um, what's called next generation sequencing, advances in sequencing technologies that are really um, being rolled out in the UK and the NHS quite extensively through something called the 100,000 Genomes Project, um, which is offering whole genome sequencing, so sequencing of all the genes um, in, in, in the genome to really understand what are the genetic abnormalities that might underlie uh, the development of myeloproliferative neoplasms and that could be very important for us to learn for example why certain patients respond to treatment and certain patients don't, why some patients um, have, have more aggressive disease that, that transforms to a, 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 a much more advanced phase more quickly than other patients and that will allow us to tailor our approaches or what we call personalized approaches um, to precision medicine so we can really select the right treatment, the right advice and the right diagnostic tests for any given patient with MPN. I think MPN voice is a, is a fantastic source of information. You have to be a little bit careful with Dr. Google because Dr. Google can, um, there's a lot of information out there. If you Google myeloproliferative neoplasms, um, there's a lot of misinformation, should we say, out there. So I think you've got to be careful to make sure one looks at a reputable source of information. The MPN voice uh, website is a really useful uh, form of information and if you can't directly find the information you need on the website there's contact details to follow things up. If people are interested in learning more about Genomics England and the whole genome sequencing initiatives through the 100,000 Genomes project they have their own website that is, is very user friendly and designed for patients and the public to understand to, uh, so to be very accessible.